Good, good morning my YouTube viewers, Crystal here. What I wanted to do in this video is to give you a code review in the code that I submitted to Kaggle on the uh, course era uh, project called Predict Future Sales. Now I spent all weekend long on this project definitely Friday Saturday and Sunday all day pretty much on this project uh, researching um, time series analysis and how to predict sales but what happens is on everything I researched the people who write the articles are really crafty because what they do is they'll take the training file and they'll break the training file into a training set training set and a testing set and they will only test on the information that they already have to hand and what I needed was information on how to test on the testing file and not just the training file and so finally today I broke down and I looked at some other notebooks that people had made available to people and um, I had to use some of the insight given in the notebook since I had spent literally Friday Saturday and Sunday uh, all day and Monday as well, uh, trying my hardest to make some headway on this and not getting anywhere. So I do have to say that I had to borrow some of the techniques from another Kagler and his name is Karen Jafflar, I believe, and he's on Kaggle, and he was also noted on YouTube because another YouTuber did a code review on his work. I don't know if it was this particular section, but it was a code review. So what I did was I implemented some of his ideas into my program and the ideas that I implemented helped me to get on the leaderboard which is what I want which is what I wanted I wanted to get on the leaderboard because I had just decided that I was gonna write any program just to get on the leaderboard and so I used his his ideas to get on the leaderboard which is what I wanted to do so here you can see that I'm on the leaderboard so if you go to notebooks this is the notebook that I prepared and the first thing that I did was I prepared my notebook in Google Colab because I want to keep a record of all of my work in Google Colab because it's easier for me to find what I'm doing in Google Colab than it is to log on to Kaggle because Kaggle can be quite slow and one thing that I had to do in order to get this uh, get get this to work was I had to turn on the TensorFlow unit because I tried to save it two times without turning on the TensorFlow unit and finally I turned on the TensorFlow unit and it was able to save and I was able to submit it so what we're doing now is we're just going over the code that I use and I do have to say that you know after an entire weekend and more of struggling with this project I did have to look at another um, notebook and get some advice on how to deal with this so this isn't strictly my work it's somebody else's work that I've given my own personal flair to which I had to do because I don't have anybody helping me I'm just doing this all on my own so the first thing I did was I loaded the modules and you can see here where I loaded my modules the second thing that I did was I loaded some of the data that I didn't use the third thing I did was I loaded my training data and you can see here where I have loaded the training data and I've showed a picture of the training data that I've loaded and I ask for information about this training data so you can see that um, 
you know everything there is to know about the columns. I checked to see if there were any uh, null characters, and there were no null characters. Um, and what I did was um, I checked my training chant my training data again after I checked for null characters to show that there were no null characters. But probably if you were doing this you wouldn't have to have two DF trains but for some reason I put two in there. The next thing I did was I described my uh, DF train so you can see all of the statistics of this file DF train and I converted the uh, date to a date time format and the next thing I did was I had created, created a tip pivot table. And what I had done over the weekend, over the weekend, I had created a pivot table. But because I don't have a lot of experience creating tip pivot tables, not even in Microsoft Excel, which is what I use in my day job, um, I didn't really know what I was doing. So I had to borrow his code to actually create the pivot table itself. So that is one thing that I borrowed from this guy. So we've got the pivot table and you can see here that it, it goes into 33 days and that's for like one day of the one month. One column is one month. The next thing I did was I loaded my test set and you can see I've got a diagram of the test set. And the next thing I did is this is something that I had to borrow from that guy. Um, I merged the test set with the uh, data set to make one file out of, out of the pivot table and the test set. And then what I did was I checked for any null characters. And one thing that you'll notice that's interesting is that um, on the training set, I didn't have any null characters, but whenever I merged the pivot table with the test set, I had loads of null characters. So what I had to do is I had to put a pro um, program in place or code in place to replace all the null characters with zero. And then what I did again was I, I went and checked for any null characters again, and that was zero. So this is all the information that you need to know about the data set and that gives you uh, every, every day or every number is actually a month. So in this data set we drop the shop ID and the item ID and the item because you don't need those variables when uh, carrying out the time series analysis. So you can see that those variables have been dropped. And the only thing that you've got is the number 0 to 33 to indicate like the 34 months. The next thing I did was uh, I split the data set into the uh, all of the data set except the last, all of the columns except the last one were on X train. And then Y train was the uh, very last column. I think that's 33. And then uh, what I had to do was this is what was going to be trained on. And so we printed X train, Y train, and X test just to see their shape and you can see that those um, files were um, two dimensional arrays. And now we're getting to the hard part. We use the sequential command to actually do the analysis and I had I had over the weekend, you know, whenever I was studying and trying to get trying to do something, trying to make some headway, with uh, my some headway uh, with this project, I did actually study the sequential command um, because quite a lot of people use it, but I couldn't make any headway with it. So I had to actually borrow the code from this guy to learn how to uh, initiate the sequential can command properly. <laughs> 
And then what we did was we fit the model. And when we fit the model, it went through 10 cycles. And then you needed TensorFlow, really, to go through these 10 cycles. And it was quite, did take a while to do that. And then after I went through the 10 cycles, I created my submission file. And you can see this is the code that I used to create the submission file. And then at the end, what I did was I showed the submission file just so you can see that there was a submission file. So that concludes the code review that I submitted to Kaggle so that I can get on the leaderboard. You know, I'm quite tired. I had a you know, definitely Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and today, um, I was working, working on this, trying my best to do it on my own. But in the end, I needed a little bit of help. And this guy called Karen, uh, Karen uh, is the one, his, his uh, notebook is the one that I got some advice from. And his notebook was made publicly available. So I have to cite my sources because I don't want anyone to think that I'm plagiarizing his work. I don't know if you look at the Kinji videos, but Kinji was complaining that somebody plagiarized him. But my view is like if you're just learning, you're just starting out and you're just learning, you have to look at the work of other people, especially if you don't have anyone teaching you, you're having to teach yourself. So that concludes this presentation. Uh, I've got another, another, um, another project on the leaderboard and I'll show you my projects that I'm currently on. So I'm on the uh, Predict Future Sales, that's kudos, and that was a Coursera course. I don't know if I'm going to do any more with that. The Titanic, I got like a 78%. Uh, you can't really get any higher than like an 85% unless you cheat. That's one thing I was reading something that nobody really gets any higher than an 85%. And those people that get higher than 85% have basically just researched all the survivors up on the internet and have fitted uh, their model for the survivors, which is not really what they're supposed to be doing, but they do it. And then I've got my house prices, which I had... Um, recently uh, gave you a presentation on and that was my work the most of it was my work especially you know I did have to actually look at other people's work to give me some ideas but it was my work especially uh, in the lasso command and the alpha that definitely was mine I had to look that up and then we've got Pedal to the Metal. That's a tensor flow. So I may go back to Pedal to the Metal at some point because it's tensor flow. It's very memory intensive and has a tendency to crash the system. So I don't know if I'm going to want to go back to that or not. So that concludes it for my uh, code review and telling you what projects I've on entered. And um, if you like my video, please like, subscribe, and share. If you want to support the work I'm doing, I have my PayPal uh, email address down below. If you want to make a donation, it will be very gratefully received uh, so I can uh, defray my many expenses. And um, I would just like to say thank you so much for watching this video, and I will see you next time.